Hi. How are you? Oh, how are you? I'm fine. Really? We're not live. We're doing I, s- I see the numbers moving. Yeah, we're cool. yeah good. Oh, so, oh, so what we're doing, because because I, uh, I don't want to say too much. It's a bunch of too many things, but we have to actually record it and then post it and then put it up. So uh, whatever. Anyway, so one more you. time. I'm here for you, babies. <laughs> I'm with, here with Boogie. Say hi to everybody. What's going on, everybody? Finally. Oh, let me get out of the shadow. You know, this Popolo, Popolo skin. You got to got to get a good lighting. Yeah. What's going on? I'm Boogie. Yeah. Uh, some call me Dion Boogie Scott. Just call me Boogie. Boom. Yeah. Childhood nickname. Back in the day. Uh, it's good to he- be here with Bill. It's we're amazing, gonna, actually. We're going to kill this, man. <laughs> One way or the other. I may be getting a new phone at the end of this. No way. We got this. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um... We've been having problems right now, but here was what we're gonna do. I'm just, I'm always off the cuff, so yeah. that's great. So let's get right into a different question. Let's go. Yeah. How'd you get here? Don't so, say, don't, don't say airplane. Don't kick your butt. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, my, my stories to me seem great, but they do seem a little long winded. I don't care. We got but, all that. But here's how I got yeah. here. So I grew up. Guy gave me a boogie nickname, right? This same group in Spanaway, Washington, right? A uh, little, I got to say PC, little uh, country town. Uh, and so, good friend of mine, uh, Sean Roberts, best buddy of mine, we came here in '88 wow. for spring break. Oh no way! Right? Wow. And stayed a week. Yeah. And it was just a hey, Hawaii spring break. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. And then uh, the following year, finished school and everything. He's done with uh, college is done. And he's working in his parents' printing shop. Quick print. There were some quick prints here in Hawaii. That was the anyway. So he's in the shop. Yeah. And he's manning the family owned shop. I come in, I got my guitar. Yeah. Pass the time. How many uh, copies can you make? Like, through the Anyway, there's some downtime. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm in with my guitar. Yeah. We're bored. Next thing you know, behind the counter, out comes the tequila. Oh. Something. And he got fired. Um, from the family. <laughs> from the family. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, hey. Hey, you want to move to Hawaii? That's what he tells me. You want to move to Hawaii? I'm like, sure, why not? It was just like yeah, that. Dude. And then in like 89, we ended up here in 89. And uh, he stayed a year, went back to Washington. I've been here ever since. Man. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and then when did you think you could make a, or, you know, a living or, or a playing a, gig? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so for those who are fortunate to catch the brief live. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was, you know, I was talking about my dad being a musician in the Quintones, doo wop. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, one more time. Yeah, do the dad part again. Yeah, yeah. And this is the camera. Yeah, so, so, so my dad, uh, Ronnie Scott, Ronald Leroy oh. Scott, uh, late fifties, I want to say fifty eight, was in a in a doo wop group called the Quintones. Quinn Q U I N dash Tones, and uh, they charted number five on the Billboard with the one of those wedding songs down the aisle of love played the Apollo the coasters these kind of you know these groups back then wow. and uh, got uh, I think chess picked them up briefly they one hit man, you know how the business is you don't produce another one they found themselves without a, a contract yeah and uh, because I love all that stuff. The pot and monotones, the yeah. patterns, the coasters, the whole. So, yeah. here, here, so yeah. here's the deal. He he goes into the Air Force. The band, you know, kind of breaks up. He goes in the Air Force. But he wants his kids to be about music. So he buys everyone. Everyone gets an instrument. I get the guitar. I was about 10 years old. Get the guitar. Someone had a snare kit, bass, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure my sisters had like something, <laughs> microphone or anyway. And it was like we're gonna be the next Jackson Five, right? Because this is the '70s, and uh, that didn't happen. But I stuck with it. Uh, I 
went in between back and forth with my, my, my baseball glove okay. and guitar. And I got serious again around 16 with the guitar. And uh, the thing about the that upbringing, the doo-wop, right? Mm -hmm. On the baseball team in Columbus, Ohio, listening to uh, Eddie Money on the radio to practice. It's yeah. like, yo, uh, I've always been a radio guy. Like, you know, I didn't, I didn't spin a lot of records. I always tuned in. But all the, all that music just shaped me. And so I get here, like I said, 89. And here's the deal, Bill. <laughs> you're like, you're, you're the real deal. Metal guy, like rock and roll. So I'm in Washington. I got my guitar, I'm practicing my scales. And I, you know, Van Halen was a huge influence then, of course. Uh, and I'm trying to just pick out note for note these solos, right? Yeah. yeah. And we rush in, wow, and I'm right. So I think I'm ready. Yeah. I go out. Not even here, I get here. There's like hundreds of guys, faster, cleaner, like just, that was, you know. So I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> but then I, I, Got more into like, so like Clapton, right? Eric Clapton, all these guys. Right? Yeah. Everyone you had on the show, they play guitar. Don't yeah. want to bore you. Pretty much the same guys, uh, with some few exceptions. But then when Clapton really comes out with Unplugged, I think it was in '86. He's back, paying homage to Robert John. Like he's really, you know, he's he's talking about that. He was playing the stuff before, but he's really. <coughs> Started gigging, played the whole Unplugged album. <laughs> that really? was all I did. Wow. Started gigging, and then that's when I didn't even own an acoustic back then. This is like North Shore, uh, early 90s, a place called Steamers. You remember? I don't know how long you've been here, but. Uh, and I'm in fine dining music, right? And. Uh, plain electric? Plain electric, the jazzy jazz. chords. Kind of so. Uh, Robin is the name of the guitarist out of Texas. Yeah. And how did I come across that? I dropped it in the music store and I had to buy it. So that's how I did it. <laughs> the whole thing, you drop it, you buy it. Then I had one of those uh, reverse headstocks. And so when I went, put it back, it kind of was like, eh. anyway. Oh, yeah. Great guitar, though. Jazz chords. Every now and then I would sing. And then right around the corner, coffee gallery, no shore. Like, hey, come over and play. So unplugged. I'm like, I need an acoustic. I went. I got a Martin D18 Shenandoah model, and, yeah. and that was it. So I just started playing strictly that, that bluesy bottleneck. Yeah. And because Clapton's talking about Robert, so I'm digging further back. Robert. Yeah. Muddy. Yeah. All these. And that was. Yeah. That's kind of how. Yeah. And. Because what happened for me was I knew all this stuff. I started a magazine with my buddy. Fresh out of fresh in college, and then as you get bigger and you better, or whatever, right. um, all of a sudden, all the record companies send you stuff. And then MCA buys out the chess catalog, and I'm getting all that chess stuff in the mail. You know, more real folk blues, yeah, the two yeah, London yeah, sessions yeah. with Alan Wolf and Muddy Waters. Yes. And it's like the education yeah, stuff. I mean, I knew this stuff, but then you could put it on the album yeah. and put the needle yes. on it. Go yes. Diddley doing this thing. Right, right. It's like. I mean, I knew all this stuff, but they have it on no, the record, no. and it's like... I didn't. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I really did. Yeah, because we were record kids. I mean, I mean, it's a good... Because you said you were a radio guy. I was a radio guy until I got older. Then we had a used record store that was Grand Central for everybody in my town. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, you'd go in and pick up used records. Right, that was, right. The bad thing about records is that little pops. Right. You don't get that on the radio. We love but, it now, though. But. Oh, you guys love it. I'm gonna, <laughs> tell me, I'll tell you about MP3s. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm fully embraced in all that. I mean, yeah. even now, I'll track down some obscure people like uh, uh, Fred Smith or Blind Lemon Jefferson yeah, yeah, or, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. the yeah. whole gambit and stuff, you know. What was the guy, Marty, uh, Blind Lemon Pledge? Yeah. Remember that guy? Something uh, like that, Comedian. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Marty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blind yeah. Lemon Pledge. But, you know, just go through and uh, just find that yeah. stuff, you know, go to Sun House and then you get... You know, and of course, Howling Wolf and Howling yeah, Wolf is this yeah. big guy. No. And he has that voice, and uh, and then the good thing is sometimes there's documentaries to be fine. And one of the guitar players go, "I was scared of him. He was like some big guy. Yep. He yelled at. It was like, 
Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it might have been Herbert, Herbert's song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so I say radio, and that, that is, because growing up, but I mean, this is like my dad, my mom, dad, 45s. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, are you guys like driving to the store, or you all singing to the radio and stuff? Yeah. Oh my heck yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the best part. My kids, one of the things I did for my kids was, um, I gave them an iMac and a personalized playlist. And then, and so instead of going to sleep on TV, they had music going oh, on. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so somehow yeah, it was heavy, yeah. heavy on yeah. the queen. Yeah. And so a bunch of, you know, four yeah. kids uh, singing Bohemian Rhapsody or Someone to Love. It was like, yeah. Love yeah. it. So. No, I can relate to that because yeah. my, both That's my boys, yeah. uh, oldest is a musician. Uh, and same thing, the influences. Like, we, so maybe you remember Okay, when I went to high school in the 80s, right? Yeah. Uh, I can remember this, like, people getting in a fight over, like, rock and roll, disco sucks. Like, it was like one thing. Like, yeah. You know, like, yeah. you listen to one thing, and I'm like, really? Yeah. And I'm the military brat moving yeah. into listening to Hank Williams Jr., senior too. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, all the 80s stuff from Devo to what, you know, wow, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I always, the quote was always, you know, you know, and people back, what kind of music you listen to? Good, good music. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's what came through later on when I started to develop my own style. Because at some point with the uh, Delta, it was, it got, it was like you said, an education. Yeah. And I, I played places and talked to people and did shows and guys start talking about these. And you know, at some point, I was embarrassed. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm like, I love the music, yeah. but I wasn't really that educated on, you know, later, way later in life that I started really getting into some uh, the back history of these guys. But I did feel like at some point I was known as you know, it was like boogies blues, yeah. boogie like, right? Yeah. It was all about, and that's fine. Yeah, but it was definitely. Yeah. More to me than just because of all that influence. Yeah. So when I started writing my own stuff, that was an opportunity to like write out a little bit. Just, yeah. yeah. James yeah. Taylor, yeah. Paul Simon, all those songwriters yeah. tell a story. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. uh, James and I were, uh, James McCarthy and I, yeah. we were geeking out, and uh, he mentioned Van, Van Morrison asked for weeks. And it's like, I had to go and find it again and play it. And it's, it's amazing how that. Guy, yeah. it just everything was so free form and just like it just hit hit right, right, and right, just right. do what he could do. Yeah. And so yeah. it's, it's more punk than people understand. I mean, as punk as a feeling or an attitude, yeah, right, not right, as like, right, right, right. but yeah, because no, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, for me, it's music is an expression, and whatever you in that moment, that can be the expressive thing. And I, and, I, and for, for you guys who play every single night, sometimes twice a week. I mean, yeah. twice a night. It's like, how, what's inspiration now? I mean, of course you're getting paid, but like when you get there, is there a different, every venue is different for you or you have a crowd, you have a fall, you have a crowd yeah. and stuff. No, but you, you put it perfectly as far as it's, you know, that it's an expression, yeah. mood. Uh, driving down, I was thinking, uh, uh, on the way down, I was thinking about like, when it, when it comes to my influences, and even, you know, self taught. Yeah. And I don't say that like, I'm self taught. You know, <laughs> I wasn't the best teacher. Anyway. But uh, learn by ear. Yes. Never never read music. I tried and it actually slowed me down. Um, but it was about mood, what you got from that, you put on the track, and just yeah. like, it, I would absorb it. Later in life, my wife was like, "Are you listening to that again? Are you seriously listening?" To it? But I was just picking out little, right, little yeah. nuances and little. Yeah. And so, but I did notice, and this was on the drive down. So this yeah. is new. You, yeah. you've caused me to like, like this revelation. A lot of lyrics, I don't know. Like when you hear a song that's been on the radio for you, yeah. like been out, the most popular song, right? Yeah. Uh, and I'm seeing like, what the hell is this? What the hell are they talking about? I don't even, yeah. I don't even catch it because I'm purposely. Yeah. I'm just trying to absorb what that guy was, you know, like, Yeah. And I put the lyrics aside. 
because that will lock me into something. Yeah. That story, right? Yeah. But a lot of times that just the mood, the vibe, yeah, the music, whether it's, you know, anywhere anything you're in the funk, right? Rock, metal, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Just because mm-hmm. right. you're right, because the, the actual music doesn't lie. Yeah. The words yeah. could be you know, who, the worst thing about lately, I saw that Beatles documentary, Let It Be. Yeah. And it's like yeah. you, you I used to hold those songs sacred. Wow. Yeah. Then you find out they're just gibberish. <laughs> you know, it's like McCartney going, Okay, what rhymes with this? You know, it's like you know, and then yeah. then you start picking out they're actually songwriters write a whole contingent right. of a mood or whatever. Then you have songwriters flip the their songbook yeah. like, Well, where it rhymes with broken door. Yeah, yeah. they got apps for that now. Yeah. yeah. But it was good. So, because I've yeah, never yeah, lyric yeah. guy, I was um, my first music experience with my dad. He was a jazz fan, okay. and not like the Miles Dizzy's jab. It was like the West Coast Cal oh, Jader, uh, um, yeah, um, yeah, West yeah, Montgomery. West Montgomery yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's no mute. There's no lyric. There's yeah. no yeah. whatever right. in there, right? And then all of a sudden, we're <laughs> we moved and from Monterey, and then we're driving to Grandma's house, and we get over the. Shake a pass, whatever, yeah. and it's like Wolfman Jack. The bottom line, I'm dying. Here's the monotones of Book of Love, and then like, huh, huh? There are the people singing. <laughs> yeah. what? What's the singing the stuff? Wolfman, yeah, yeah, but oh, then, but because yeah. the doo wop thing, yeah. like early Elvis, and oh, that was that, that was really cool because yeah. it was because yeah. yeah. um, music before then was just kind of you know straight laced yeah. kind right, of right, right, blah right. blah. Then all of a sudden, Little Wildness yeah. came in. Yeah. And, and the doo-wop people, like, they're precursors to the rap guys. They're on the street corner doing the same thing, exactly. yeah. but they're getting harmonizing right. together. Yeah. It's not how low you yeah. can get with this. It was like yeah. how your vocal melodies can blend together. Right. right? You yeah. know? So, so I'm named like, after Dion. So oh, really? Belmont, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's like the, the hugest. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean all those guys are doing stuff, but he just somehow... Yeah. Did other things besides just that. He's doing blues now. Yeah. You know, he's doing blues. He was yeah, here at the Blue Note a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. I think I get the stupid album yeah. kind of thing. I was like, okay, yeah. might as well buy it. Like, who's on this? Okay. Right. Yeah. But, you know, it's cool. Yeah. 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 No, and so, cool, so you're playing, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I've seen so many artists here, and somehow they start connecting. Yeah. When does that vibe hit you? The yeah. first, you walk in, I'm boogie, and like, yeah. or is it like, all of a sudden you play that one song and everybody's going, yeah, no, no, there's, there's a, I don't know, most of the, most of the musicians locally that I know are very humble. Um, yes. Super, super humble. Not, not the guy that goes in and just like, look at me, here I am, kill it tonight. Yeah. Most guys, you know, because, why is a special place? You know, I mean, I could be, you know, right now I'm gigging mostly in Cal and New, New, New Valley. So I, but back in the day, like when I was doing more, and if I got into white and blue, and these guys will tell you, it's like, you don't know what you're getting. Don't know Lulu's. What do you get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. what percentage is tourists, what percentage is locals? But for me, I only do what I do. You're not going to catch no, yeah, me yeah, now yeah, playing yeah. to the crowd like, yeah. oh, let me throw some wine in here because it's a, no, yeah. no, no. Uh, let me throw some, you know, some popular stuff. The only time I do that, I will, I will back up and, and call myself a liar. The only time I do that is with the Louis Armstrong. Oh. Oh, see, Jesus. Yeah. Okay, right, that no, no. You, you, yeah. Really? But wow. it's, it's yeah. more, I'll test the room. Yeah. And especially if there's an older generation, I'll throw that out there. Yeah. And then you get to, ah, 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 and then I can play whatever I want. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But coming in, trying to be you know, yeah. just humble. Uh, it's, for me, I play places. That, here's where I play. You know, from a good friend of mine who, who had a restaurant called Deb's Ribs. And she had her barbecue sauce and Sam's. I want you. I played at a restaurant. Can you come out? I'm a demo. Can you come play? Sure, sure, Andy. Right, sure, right. And I'm playing in between the frozen food segments. <laughs> the frozen. I'm like literally set up next to the frozen chicken. She's got meatballs in her sauce, and I got a little ham on a plate. Like yeah. from that, that right to like you know like glaze it, right? Yeah. And it's one of those things that. Through the years, I've learned how to, I think say, read the room. Yeah. Like, and that's, and 
any profession really, yeah. especially public yeah. speaking, whatever. So these is this is a good sign that someone's like maybe not enjoy their tapping, throw yeah. tapping. To this day, I still look for those little as I ease yeah. into it, warm my voice up. You know, and yeah. and uh, but I'll be honest, there's some nights that. <laughs> The way that the room is set up, yeah. it made it a little disconnect, right? A little yeah. disconnect, so it's yeah. harder to read. And then yeah. you just really, you kind of play for yourself. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah. Open up your eyes because you were into it. Yeah. And actually, you know, like, everyone you do it. So. Yeah. yeah. Because the thing about, I'm going to say the word, you guys, here on this island, yeah. I mean, yeah. they play, yeah. they really play almost every night sometimes, or five nights a week. And they'll pay to a captive crowd because either at a bar or a restaurant or something. And and most of these guys, especially the older guys, they'll like all of a sudden people are loving it. They're understanding. They're like and they're because they're, they're travelers and they're open to certain things. And then all of a sudden they're having dinner with their family or whatever. And this guy is singing and they wow, this is kind of cool. No, okay. Saying that, there's a whole group of new people coming up. What would you be your advice? So, because you, you, yeah. I mean, the, you, the, the, the Michael Pranas, the Stevie yeah, Lewis, yeah, right. you guys have done it, and you're still doing it well. But yeah. there's a lot of these new kids coming out. So there's there's a guy, and uh, man, I don't want I don't want to stop from the, the flow to look up at yeah. Jigar, Jigar. I can't. Sorry, brother. If you, if you see this, but here's the thing. I'm playing. Uh, back in 90, uh, let's see, my kid was running around knocking over my guitar, so that was probably 98 <laughs> when we first moved to Kailua side. Yeah. Uh, playing at Aikahi, Muddy Rocks, little shop, little coffee shop. Yeah. It's this big, dude. Yeah. This is it, right? So we moved outside. Aikahi, Safeway, huge. Oh, yeah. And, and, it, it, and it became this Friday night drive up blues night. And that's where I met most of the guys. Harmonica players came out of the woodwork. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> so I tie this in with that question. This kid shows up. I've been playing there years now. This kid shows up. Young black kid. And uh, I've always been, and maybe this is the uh, school teacher in me. Always young ones. I'm always like, yeah, yeah. 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 Even, come up, come up on stage. Yeah, yeah. Here, play something, right? Right? Yeah. And uh, he played some kind of R&B style, really nice, and lost track of him. Lost track of him. Just last month, re yeah. reconnected with this guy, right? Okay, yeah. And uh, he's, he's got some gigs in town, right? Uh, and he's like, man, I, I just appreciate, you know, what you did for me, right? And how, uh, so, that's probably one. I mean, you never, you always pay it forward. You never like, yeah. it's not, you know, and uh, you treat yourself. These are like the cheesy t-shirt type stuff. But in this, this industry, or this, you know, yeah. what you put out really comes back. It really does. Because yeah. think about, like, you, you, we know you probably better than I. Some of those performers, you know, like you think of your days and, and, and in the, in the rock and roll metal, yeah, all right. Those, and we know why Van Halen did the, the Eminem thing. We know, yeah. like later, you know, yeah. But I mean, trashy places, just right. Uh, that's like them rebelling against the, the record companies and this and that. Yeah. But for why it still is about that uh, aloha. Yeah. Like, don't go out. And yeah. Think you're all. You know, think you're yeah. don't stink, yeah. right? It's a small island. It's a small island. So and everybody know, knows everybody. That, and that's yeah. that's yeah. And so when you ask that, yeah. my kid's 29. He's playing, you know, he's more the island music, playing with Molly, and, uh, the vitals, and so that reggae, right? Touring all over. Wow. So when you ask me that, yeah. he's the young one. I'm like basically speaking to him, which of course I already have several times, right? But he's a super humble guy. And we're going to say his name to really know. Oh, the Mad King. Yeah. The Mad King. M-A-A-D King. But Asaya. Asaya Scott. Yeah. Yeah, so he's killing it. Uh, he's on Maui. Because that's the cool thing. Yeah. Because even like um, like Tavana or Kaimi, yeah. 
their generations of musicians in their family. Yeah. And then yeah. same with you. Yeah. And then it you know goes that way. It's in their blood kind of thing. So and that's the cool thing because you know I mean Tavana's third generation. Right. Right. Yeah. You know. And so I mean uh, even like um, um, Kamoela, I Uncle Kimo's son. He's like third generation. His mom used to sing back and forth Elvis or something yeah. like that. You know, his dad. So it's good because it, it's in the blood yeah, and, and you foster it kind of thing. That's also what we were talking about. The special, like, why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you get that as much in the big cities. I mean, yeah. You like, you know, you get like, oh, Bob Dylan, his his uh, his Dylan yeah, son, Jacob, yeah, uh, Jacob yeah. and there's the yeah. huge names. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's different. Yeah. 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 And you can also be. Someone that uh, you know, uh, known guys like Ledward, Valpana, uh, who's taking guys under his wing. Yeah, Slack Key, mm -hmm. legend, right? Yeah. Uh, and we're talking about Halloween, like not, you know, what I mean, like yeah. guys who Uncle Sunny with Makana. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's a like perfect example. No, same thing with yours. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Hi, Makana. Sooner or later, we're talking, dude. Makana, you owe me twenty bucks. Yes. <laughs> Delivered your equipment. No, man. Uh, it, it, I love these questions. This is a good question. Make me, well, because make me it's, learn. It's one of the things about like, myself. The whole thing about this is, is like, one, I get to talk to you. Yeah. I mean, with one on one at a beautiful place, the acoustics are yeah. great here. Awesome. I mean, on this side, we're great, right? And then, you know, it's a, like, I'm a music fan. Yeah. Uh, or, um, Kalani Zu, I'm a musicologist. But, um, and I just like hanging out with buddies, and we don't get to hang no. out. Not it is an excuse for me to actually like hang out. And right, then the other right. thing is, everybody over there seeing all your photographs. Everybody, seen, you know, yeah, around the world, right. seeing like, and like right. now they can connect. Yeah. Like, oh, this is a real person. Right. Yeah. You know, making human kind of thing. This is important. But, but uh, so no, so you're driving in the car, yeah. going around. Yeah. Are you still listening to the radio? Yeah. So okay, so I went from the radio. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, you know, you get a little change in your pockets you, back in the yeah. cassettes, right? Yeah. So yeah. like most of us, the generation cassettes, yeah. and then trans CDs, right? Yeah. By the time you get to the MP3, yeah, I'm I'm like I'm not old, but I'm like, wait, there's there's too many steps in this, like <laughs> there's too many, and so I stuck with CDs for longer than most probably, yeah, but um. Here's 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 my here's my cassette story. So when I'm sitting there, I'm playing. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm like trying to pick out an air clap and solo on a cassette. Rewind, yeah, rewind, yeah. Right? yeah. And then for it starts to sound like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think it was cocaine solo. Yeah. Let, I didn't even know there's two guitar yeah. players yeah. playing that one. <laughs> so, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on.